Good. What, what were your thoughts on the meeting? You can wait. I gotta get an elevator. Ah, move, 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 move. Sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, Virginia. Oh, come on, guys. Get away from the damn elevator, okay? Virginia is coming back. This one right here. Republican Congresswoman Virginia Fox of North Carolina is very grumpy. I am prepared to stay here until we elect the speaker. Oh, 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 I can't speak to everybody. Oh, I'm so sorry, Virginia. I'm sorry. Virginia is coming back. This one right here. This one right here. Go find a place to talk. <laughs> I love Virginia. I do. I love Things are going I love well. Listen, listen, we're Virginia Fox. You know where you stand. And in this and in this town, I love that. Maybe she should be speaker. Let's see. Talk, talk to her right now. She's out of luck. And who can blame her? She is 80 years old. She is still working. Her job is not easy, and this week has not been easy for anyone. If this clip tells me anything, it's that we're all much more alike than we are different because how is this not the most relatable thing that you've seen? I have an attitude problem. I get grumpy when things are more difficult than they need to be. In this particular moment, I am Virginia Fox. But for House congressional members to be grumpy right now, it's totally understandable. The House is in turmoil without a leader and without a bench. The Senate has been rendered useless by its own members. And the world is watching as violence unfolds again in the Middle East and as violence continues in Ukraine. The legislative branch of the U.S. government has stultified itself. With the former Speaker Kevin McCarthy ousted from the position, the gavel is up for grabs. Earlier this week, members of the House convened to nominate a new speaker, even though most of them were fine with the old one. To say the Republican Party is divided right now is putting things lightly. McCarthy was vacated from the seat because a small faction of fringe Republicans wanted him gone. Representative Matt Gates brought forth the motion to vacate seemingly without having anyone in mind to fill the vacancy that he was creating. When the motion passed with support from the Democrats, the Republicans, who all but eight wanted to keep McCarthy, were then left with the task of choosing their next speaker. So they nominated Steve Scalise of Louisiana, the current House Majority Leader, but only by a handful of votes. About 100 Republicans wanted to nominate Jim Jordan instead, and neither of those options are great for the American people. McCarthy wasn't great, but at least he didn't have questionable ties with white supremacists, and at least he wasn't screaming into a bullhorn on January 6th. So then the question was, how is Scalise going to get the votes? I talked about it in a previous video, and I figured that Scalise would have to make a lot of deals and a lot of promises with some of the party's most extreme members in order to secure the necessary 217 votes that he would need, just like McCarthy had to, and we saw how all that went down for him. But this time, I thought that the added provision of agreeing to shut down the government in November would be non-negotiable. After all, the Gates faction wanted McCarthy out because he stooped so low as to work with the Democrats to not shut the government down. Unacceptable. But then, in a shocking turn of events, Scalise, after having won the nomination for Speaker, has removed himself from the race. Why? No one knows. Maybe he just didn't want to deal with it. He's already the second highest ranking member in the House, and the Speaker job, apart from the clout, is kind of unenviable. It's also not unusual for Speakers to step down from that position before their term is even up. Scalise did say, quote, There are some folks that really need to look in the mirror over the next couple of days and decide, are we going to get it back on track, or are they trying to pursue their own agenda? You can't do both. This comment might have something to do with the fact that Matt Gates has been accused of using this moment as a fundraising opportunity, potentially playing the long game in garnering support and money for a future bid for Florida governor. House Republicans have yet to announce a new nominee. A few other names have been thrown into the mix, so it's not guaranteed that Jim Jordan will now get the nomination. In the meantime, the House cannot legislate. Aid to Ukraine hangs in the balance, the federal budget can't be negotiated, nothing can happen until this is resolved. So all of that to say, if Virginia Fox is grumpy, who could blame her? All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like and subscribe to the channel and be sure to follow me on all the socials. Also, please check out my podcast, Modern Context. Episode 5 is out today. Thanks.